Hey, in this video, we are going to explore the pulse generator. The easiest way to get the pulse generator is double click and write pulse generator. And there we go, we have the pulse generator. The another way to get the pulse generator is go to this library browser and in library browser go to the sources. In sources here we have the pulse generator and to add just click it and add it. And here we have the another pulse generator. We will remove it and now to observe the waveform of this pulse generator we will get the scope. So there we go here we have the pulse generator the scope and now we will run it. Here we have the block parameter of pulse generator and on right hand side we have the display the output of that pulse generator in scope. The first thing indicates the amplitude which is 1. So here you can see this is the amplitude of that signal 1. The next thing is period which is 5 second. Period indicates the time requires to complete one cycle. Indirectly this time represents the frequency because f is equal to 1 upon t. So through this period you can set the frequency. Right now the period is of 5 second. So after every 5 second the pulse will repeat. The next is pulse width which is represented in percentage of period. The period is of 5 second and the pulse width is 5. So this indicates that for this 5 seconds of pulse, the 5% of time the pulse will be high and for the rest of the time the pulse will be low. This is the meaning of pulse width. And the last one is phase delay. This indicates after this much of delay, the pulse will turn on. Here the phase delay is 0, so after 0 seconds delay the pulse will be on. Now let us make some changes in parameter and observe how output looks. We will make amplitude as 0 0.5 period of 1 second and we will make pulse width 25%. Phase delay we will right now keep it as 0. Run. And here you can see the amplitude has changed to 0.5, the period is 1, so after every 1 second the cycle will repeat itself, the pulse width is 25%, so for 0.25 second the signal will be on and the phase delay is 0. Let's make it 75, okay. And you can see here for 0.75 second the pulse is high and for the other time it is low. Now we'll make some changes in phase delay. We'll make it as 0.5 second and let's make it 20%. Okay, and run. And here you can see the pulse will start after 0.5 second. So this is the meaning of phase delay. This is the 20% pulse width and this is the 0.5 amplitude. Here in this period, instead of seconds, if you want to mention quantity in frequency, then you can write it like this. For example, I want to go for 50 Hz frequency, then 1 by 50. That gives me the frequency in 50 Hz. And here in this phase delay, instead of the time delay, if I want to give delay in angle, then I can write it like this. For example, I want to give delay of 120 degree, right? And my frequency is 50 Hz. So 120 degree, 50 Hz is 0 0.02 second divided by 360 degree. Right? Make it OK and run. So this is our signal. Let's zoom it. And you can see here the delay is of 120 degree. So after 120 degree, it will turn on. The amplitude is 0.5 and the frequency is 50 Hz. That means one cycle will be completed in 0.02 second. And here you can see. So this is how you can use the pulse generator. And if you want to know how to generate PWM signal and SPWM signal, then you must check out the next video. There are more interesting simulations on MATLAB. If you are interested in that, then you must visit the MATLAB Simulink playlist. So until we meet again in our next video, till the time, bye bye.